Where'd you get these insults? The insult store? Dumbass. Double dumbass. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 dumbest insults in movies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You should know that we're taking into account whether or not the insults actually make sense, how hard they tried, and how spectacularly they failed. All right, let's see how they did. Number 20, stupid comments, the room. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. What better way to kick off a list of the worst movie insults than with what's widely considered to be the worst movie, period? In this gem of a misfire, there is no shortage of bad acting laced with bad dialogue. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. While many viewers get their laughs at the expense of writer, director, star Tommy Wiseau, virtually no actor is left unscathed. Least of all co-star Greg Sestero, whose character has some choice words for a friend when confronted. We weren't aware that's where people kept comments, but sure thing. You don't understand anything, man. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. Number 19, Sons of a Motherless Goat, Three Amigos. You sons of a motherless goat. When you're a silent film star, the spoken word isn't really much of a factor. So if there's one thing the Three Amigos are lacking, it's their verbal intimidation tactics. Thinking they're putting on a show, they are quick to rely on their old playbook, with Lucky Day uttering this head-scratcher of an insult. Seriously, whichever screenwriter jotted down that dialogue for him should go back to the drawing board, but that's not gonna stop Lucky from reenacting the scene a second time. You scum-sucking pig! You son of a motherless goat! Number 18, Phonehead, Scream 2. Well, I don't know. Bonehead. We wouldn't go so far as to say that Deputy Dewey is dumb, but he's not exactly a wordsmith. Especially when compared to his on-again, off-again flame Gail Weathers, who is caustic and brutal when she has to be. When I say hurry, please interpret that as move your fat tub of lard ass now! In this scene that sees our heroes deliberate their next move, Gail is bombarded with work-related phone calls. When she insults Dewey's intelligence, he decides to play the rhyme game, to no one's amusement but his own. Pro tip, stick to Woodsboro, Dewey. Okay, so what do you want to do, Bonehead? You just want to sit here and wait and see who drops next? Well, I don't know, Bonehead. Number 17, Sack of Wine, Troy. Spoils of war. No argument with you, brothers, but if you don't release her, you'll never see home again. Many would be intimidated by a king, but not the finest warrior in the land Achilles. When King Agamemnon claims the priestess Briseis, whom Achilles has taken as spoils of war, Achilles can't help but be indignant. You sack of wine! After being talked down from combat, Achilles voices his frustration the only way he knows how, by calling the king a sack of wine. It may just be the times, but that actually sounds good to us. We wouldn't necessarily use a sack, but hey, wine is wine. Before my time is done, I will look down on your corpse and smile. Number 16, Mexicant, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. I don't think we should. Are you a Mexican or a Mexicant? Wordplay can make just about anything sound witty, whether that's true or not. Case in point, when Kukui tries to express misgivings over Agent San's plans, Sans shuts him up by appealing to his national pride. Oh, we guess that's the end of the conversation. In fact, it works so well that Kukui himself drops the Mexican demonym later on, emphasis on the can. Silly, but it does admittedly feel right at home in this admittedly stylish Robert Rodriguez shoot 'em up. And since I'm a Mexican, I can do whatever I want. Number 15, disappointment, get hard. If I see you around here again, I'm gonna put a hashtag on your ass. If you're heading to prison, you'd better make sure that you've got your tough guy persona locked down. That's what Darnell is trying to help James to do, with, shall we say, mixed results. I'm sad dogging you. <laughs> James takes it upon himself to rehearse some trash talk dialogue, some of which is actually kind of savage. However, it's this line in particular that qualifies for this list. Hey son, you're a disappointment to your parents. Sure, it cuts deep, but it's also a mix of banal and really, really weird, leaving us more inclined to agree with Darnell's reaction. James, this is sick. You gotta be crazy to think it is. Number 14, We Watch, The Covenant. Did I, did I just say which? Sometimes the pressure to perform can make us say the wrong thing. Unfortunately, that does not seem to be what went wrong with Chase Collins' insult, at least judging by his demeanor. When Caleb pleads with him to release his girlfriend, Chase proposes something else. How about I make you 
My weach. Sure, we get it. It's a play on biatch adapted for witches. Hence a weach. It's still terrible and deflates any sense of tension going into the climax. Not that the movie was doing so well up to this point. Harry Potter can kiss my <laughs> Number 13. Take that. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. You can tell your son about it when he's born. Major Spielberg? If nuclear weapons wouldn't do the trick, what made anyone think words could hurt Godzilla? That's something Major Spielberg learns the hard way when the titular creature interferes in a World War II battle between Japanese and US forces. Oh, and you heard that right. The Major is apparently the father of the pioneer director. Go figure. Anyway, when American cannon fire seemingly defeats the lizard, the Major celebrates early and shouts an insult that would make his future son shake his head. Take that, you dinosaur. And it isn't long before Godzilla returns the favor. <laughs> Number 12. Too cool for school. Zoolander. So I guess, uh, I guess you can dare a lick my balls, Capitan. Zoolander's male models are more than just pretty faces, but not by much. However, when their egos are at stake, that's not going to stop them from trying to one-up each other. I can dare lick my own balls, thank you very much. As Derek and Hansel face off, veteran model versus up-and-coming star, Hansel takes aim at Derek's latest clothing line campaign, Derelict. Derek's retort is a definite misfire and doesn't really do him any favors. But the real doozy is this tepid barb that took way too much thought and is dead on arrival. You think you're too cool for school, but I got a newsflash for you, Walter Cronkite. You aren't. Number 11. Chicken. The Room. <laughs> chicken, Peter. You're just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Guess who's back? On any normal list, we wouldn't draw from the same movie twice, but how could we not when there's so much good stuff? You betray me. You're not good. You, you're just a chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Multiple times in the film, Johnny resorts to his favorite tactic for breaking someone down calling them a chicken whilst impersonating one. Only the sounds he creates make us question whether he's ever heard a chicken before. <laughs> Seriously, are we sure he isn't a secret bluth? Has anyone in this family ever even seen a chicken? In any case, we don't see him getting under our skin anytime soon. You're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Number 10, Butthead, Back to the Future Part Two. Now why don't you make like a tree and get out of here. It's leave. Let's just get something straight. The sharpest tool in the shed, Biff Tannen is not. He's constantly putting his foot in his mouth, blissfully unaware that his brains do not match his brawn. In Back to the Future's second installment, he finds himself paired up with his counterpart from the future, but the two immediately find themselves at odds. Turns out his vocabulary hasn't changed in 60 years, as when the older version calls him a butthead, the younger Biff's brilliant comeback is to fling the same insult right back. Just get in the car, butthead. Who you call it butthead, butthead? Number nine, double dumbass, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. It is currently laced with, shall I say, more colorful metaphors. Double dumbass on you, and so forth. Give me the profanity. Barring any humpback whale-related catastrophes, it's safe to say that human vernacular will change in 300 years' time. Such is Admiral Kirk's realization when he and his Starfleet crew travel back to 1986's San Francisco. We're guessing he isn't familiar with crosswalks because he finds himself right in the middle of traffic. Watch, watch where you're going, you dumbass! Nearly run over by a taxi cab, the driver is quick to call him a dumbass, to which Kirk, flabbergasted, can only up the ante, apparently. Well, double dumbass on you! Seems like he could have benefited from having Dustin Hoffman crossing with him. Hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Number eight, your mom, Napoleon Dynamite. And here we have some boondoggle keychains. A must-have for this season's fashion. Poor Deb. All she wanted to do was sell keychains and get a proper education. And even though the disinterested Napoleon was having none of it, she did not deserve what came next. Nor did her mom, for that matter. From the other room, Kip Dynamite doesn't miss the chance to throw down his best insult, even though it doesn't make any sense. What's wrong with going to college? What's wrong with someone's mom going to college? Regardless, Deb takes it personally and runs off. Gosh, Kip. Trying to earn money for college. Your mom goes to college. 
Number seven, Mr. Poopy Pants, the naked gun two and a half, the smell of fear. Oh, it's all right. I'm sure that we can handle this situation maturely, just like the responsible adults that we are. Leslie Nielsen's career changed for the comedic when he introduced the trademark drab delivery he's known for today. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Still, his characters weren't usually the brightest bulbs. Take, for instance, this barrage of barbs in Wrongfully Accused. You big peepee head! But we had to go with everyone's favorite police squad lieutenant, Frank Drebin, in this Naked Gun sequel. Upon bumping into an old flame, Drebin is introduced to her new lover and can't help but ruffle a few feathers. While his warm-up jab isn't bad, his knockout blow could use a little work. Isn't that right, Mr. Poopy Pants? Number six. Bigger than a mouse's, Shallow Hal. Yeah, bigger than a mouse's. The longer a comeback takes, the less of an impact it makes. And here is a case in point. When the titular Hal's manhood is put down by his friend Mauricio, he just knows he has to knock the guy back down a peg. Trouble is, like Mauricio, we can't help but count the seconds it takes for one to pop into his brain. And boy, was it not worth the wait. Even Mauricio's comeback to Hal's comeback is better. You can't come back with a comeback after eight seconds. You got. Three seconds, five, tops. I mean, that's why they call it a quip, not a slope. Number five, stupid man, Hook. I bet you don't even have a fourth grade reading level. If you're gonna be the man, you gotta beat the man. That's the situation the grown up Peter Pan finds himself in, going head to head with Rufio, the new leader of the Lost Boys. And we gotta say, Peter does not get off to a hot start, but he does buckle down and stick to his guns. Soon enough, he's got the support of the Lost Boys and all the momentum something Rufio cannot handle. As soon as Rufio utters those petty words of anguish, it's all over for him. You man! Stupid, stupid man! Number four, pieces of Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Let's do it. You know, we never would have considered golf to be a trash talking sport, but hey, when elderly game show hosts are getting socked on the fairway, we guess anything goes. You like that old man? You want a piece of me? Our titular hero and former hockey player finds himself squaring off against the cocky shooter McGavin, who is so confident in his ability to wipe the floor with Happy that he'll spit out any old thing. You're in big trouble though, pal. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. His insult doesn't sound particularly bad until Happy takes it at face value. Stunned, all McGavin can do is take it back. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. Number three, Diarrhea Club shakes the clown. He's not funny. We thought clowns were supposed to be funny. No, no, he's not funny. Well, you know, traditionally speaking. At the very least, they'd need to be able to think fast, but it would seem Ho-Ho missed improv day in clown school. When Binky and Shakes get into an altercation over the former landing a high profile TV gig, Binky goads his two cohorts into backing him up. Trouble is, Ho-Ho buckles under pressure and lets out this long drawn out stinker. Take this as a lesson, kids. Booze and clowning do not mix. Well, the only show you could ever get on would be a show called the Not Funny Diarrhea Club. <laughs> <laughs> <Our face. laughs> Number two, I am quick enough. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. What the hell's going Back on off, here? Cock boy. What I said to him goes double for you. Cock boy? You just call me cock boy? Yeah, you know I did. Man, bullies think they can get away with anything, even getting poor Harold to do all their work. Thing is, Harold has undergone quite the life-changing journey in the past 24 hours. Running into his coworkers at the titular burger establishment, he decides to confront them about their freeloading behavior, calling one cockboy. The indignant JD takes offense, and although claiming he can whip up a comeback, he's really just stalling for time. I am quick enough. Cockboy! Ultimately, he just recycles the same quip. Yeah, the ladies are not impressed either. See you boys at the office on Monday. Excuse me. Number one, toilet store. Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy. Hey, where did you get those clothes? At the toilet store? Ah, brick, sweet brick. Let it never be said that he didn't stick up for his friends. When the Channel 4 news team crosses paths with their rivals, the evening news team, things get testy pretty fast. The ever despicable Wes Mantooth has some choice words for the team regarding their fashion, to which Brick cannot help but fire back. While he seems pleased with his comeback, a confused silence speaks the loudest. Still, from where we're standing, it's so bad it's good. Never change, Brick. You can't say one word? Even the guy who can't think says something, you guys just stand there? I don't even know how to follow that. 
Anyway, uh, be sure to let us know in the comments what your favorite dumb movie insult was, and be sure to like, subscribe, and check out these other videos. Now, make like a tree and get out of here.